For a whole host of reasons, you might want to give your baby a bottle of formula. And if you do that, there's two big decisions you're going to have to make. Number one, what brand of formula to use. Number two, what brand of bottle to use. And it's that that's the subject of this video. If you stick around, I will give you one of my top tips for how to mix that bottle of formula super quick without the whole postcode knowing about it because you know that if that baby's hungry, everyone's going to hear it. Welcome to Diligent Dad. I'm Andrew. It's my mission to support you in your early steps of fatherhood. Hit subscribe and the bell icon and you'll be notified when I'm dropping new videos every single week. So bringing a baby into the world is anything but straightforward. So you might like to think that one of the things you can rely on is that your choice of bottle is going to be an easy one. Well, think again, because there are so many different brands and models of formula bottle out there. And you're going to have to get your head around all the options in order that you're making the best choice for you and your newborn. But why does it really matter to you? And the answer to that question is that by getting this right, your baby is likely to have less wind and therefore likely to sleep more. Therefore, you're likely to sleep more and everyone's going to be happier. Because the thing about bottle feeding is that compared to breastfeeding, bottle feeding does induce more wind in the baby. So you are consistently uh, bottle feeding your baby, the more likely to have more wind, the more likely to be in pain until that wind has come up as a burp and they're not gonna sleep until that has happened. So it's more uh, burping time for you until you can get your head back down. So therefore, choosing the right, making an informed decision with your formula ball will make sure, hopefully, that your baby has the minimum amount of wind, therefore requires a minimum amount of burping, and you can get back to sleep as soon as possible. And what I wanna to talk to you about today is a comparison of two of the main brands of formula bottle, both brands that we've tried extensively, had successes and failures with both, but we've now landed on what we think is the perfect solution for us. And I will talk, tell, talk you through what that solution is at the end of the video. But firstly, uh, formula bottle. I want to talk you through what a formula bottle is and, and how it works. Okay, this, you probably recognize it. This is a bottle uh, for formula milk and it's pretty standard. You've got a screw lid with a teat, which can be removed for cleaning. I'll talk a bit more about the teat in a minute. All formula bottles come with some sort of option to minimize or try and find a special way to, to minimize the amount of gas or air that the baby breathes in into its tummy or sucks into its tummy while it's drinking the milk. Uh, this is Dr. Brown this particular brand, Dr. Brown's very, very popular brand, many, many parents and babies. And what Dr. Brown does is it uses this special, um, I don't know, wand that slots into a, a special cap in the, bot in the top of the bottle, which then inserts into the bottle before you then attach on the seat and the lid. And the way that cap bit works is that it's meant to allow there's holes in the side of it here and here that's meant to allow air to go into the bottle so that as the baby's drinking the milk air is filling in at the top of the bottle so it's less likely to be air to have to come up through the teat and by less less air having to come up through the teat the baby's less, li less likely to, to suck that air into its tummy so air going goes in, fills into the, bot, the bottom of the bottle where the milk is currently being drunk out of when it's upside down, fills up in here through this special wand, which only I've only aware of that wand being in the Dr. Brown's balls. The other thing just to be aware of with the teats is that you can go and you can buy different sizes of teats. When I say sizes, pretty sure that that dimension changes. So obviously for newborns, that needs to be a lot, lot smaller and then as the child gets bigger it gets, it's a bigger bite but also the size of the hole in the end so for newborns it would be tiny tiny hole just let it drip through once that baby's sort of getting four or five months you want a much more of a stream because that's what uh, mum's body does it gets a drip when the baby's newborn and then gets much more of a stream once the baby's a number of months old and what you'll see is i mean there's guides with the teats of what ages to buy the different sizes for. You buy size zero, one, two, three, 
think it goes up to three, maybe four. Um, but also the baby will soon let you know if it looks like they're really having to strain to get milk out, you can tell they're probably ready for the next size up. Pros and cons are the two options and a lot of these are like personal to you and your situation and your baby. With the Dr. Brown, the major strength of the Dr. Brown to me is the nice clear labeling up the side. So if you're making that bottle up at two or three o'clock in the morning, you're still half asleep, you're gonna get the, the measures hopefully uh, more accurate compared to say the man ball, which is less, just not quite as clear. Um, otherwise, this nice grippy bit indent here, a bit easier to grip maybe, uh, depending on, could you be holding this bottle or some sort of funny orientation that suits your baby. Otherwise, with the mam, I think that's probably its major strengths, or with the Dr. Brown compared to the mam ball, right? So now look at the mam ball. What we like about the mam ball here is that the shape of the teat is slightly more suited to the baby being able to latch onto that and that is the more natural shape the nipple will take on whenever the baby latches onto it during breastfeeding so you get a more naturally shaped teat for the baby um, and the other major advantage of the man balls is that for sterilizing you need to sterilize your balls to make sure it's like super clean if your baby's milk's going into them, baby's then drinking that milk, you want to make sure that they are very, very, very clean. So what we do is we maybe clean them in the sink, wash up liquids, hot water, dry them off. And then what we need to do is to heat the bottle up uh, or heat the key components up. And the really nice thing with the man ball is that the way it's designed is the base is wider than the top so that you can take the teat and the, the lid off Stick that in the base like that, put the lid over the top, screw, it back, screw that bit back on, the body back on, then fill that with about 20 mils of water. Stick that in your microwave for three minutes and man reckons that that ball is then sterilized and ready to go again once it's cooled down. You don't want to give a boiling hot teat to your little baby, but that ball is ready to go again. And that is something that the Dr. Brown definitely doesn't have. So this very, very quick way of sterilizing with the Dr. Brown, you're not, you're not putting anything inside that bottle at any stage to be able to sterilize the teat or anything like that. So it just doesn't come with that functionality. So what you're doing with the Dr. Brown bottle is sticking it in a, a pan of boiling water for a few minutes just to heat everything up, or you're putting it in a purpose-made sterilizer. The, so the, the real nice thing with the, uh, MAM is that it's sort of self-sterilizing. You don't need to buy another standalone sterilizer for the MAM bottles, especially if you've already got a microwave. Um, then it's one less thing to have sitting out because some of these sterilizers are pretty substantial on the worktop. You know, the one that we have, before we realized that the MAM bottles can do that, we bought one. It's probably about that wide. It's probably like a foot wide circular sitting on the worktop if you're using it every day or you're finding that space in the cupboard. Man balls, I've always need for that, especially if we've already got a microwave, a little bit of water inside that, sterilized in three minutes. But what, what did you come here for? You came here to find out my verdict on what the best ball is, and this is through extensive trial and error. That's all you can really do. For us, extensive trial and error on Mam versus Dr. Brown has very much found that we have, both of our kids have more taken to the Mam option. So this one with the shaped teeth and everything else about the mam just seems to work a bit better. Feel like there might be less wind for the baby. Maybe it is because of the shape of the teeth, don't know. But that has worked better for us so far. Uh, and that's what we're sticking with at the moment. And one other thing just to make you aware of is that, yes, you can go out and you can buy an individual bottle like this and pay whatever for it, probably five, six quid, I imagine, like that. But equally, these manufacturers do produce big kits like this, which you get everything you could possibly need. You've got all your different bottle sizes, big bottles for the older kids, obviously, and different lids, different teats in there. So definitely if you're setting out in your, maybe, I guess what my approach would be, would be to choose or work out which bottle you want to go for, which system you want to go for. Again, my recommendation probably is the, uh, 
the mom. But then once you settled on that, go and buy the kit off Amazon or wherever it is, 30-ish quid, I think we pay for this. This has got everything we need. We're now on the second kit, using the same kit. So you don't need to go and spend hundreds on this stuff unless you really, really want to. You've been watching Diligent Dad. I'm Andrew. Hit subscribe and the bell icon. You'll be notified when I'm dropping new videos twice a week. Thank you so much for watching and see you again soon.